The following program is brought to you by Caltech. Good morning. My name is Hiroshi Oguri, and I'm the director of the Walter Berg Institute for Theoretical Physics at Caltech, which is sponsoring this workshop. On behalf of the organizers, uh, Sean Carroll, uh, Mark Wise, and myself, I'm pleased to welcome you to the Berg Institute workshop on primordial gravitational waves and cosmology. The Walter Berg Institute for Theoretical Physics was launched just a couple of days ago, and this is going to be its first scientific activity. So I would like to say a few words about this new institute. Theoretical physics has been a cornerstone of one of Caltech's missions to discover the fundamental laws of nature and to understand the natural phenomena at all scales. Caltech's commitment to theoretical physics can be evidenced, for example, by the fact that eight out of 18 professors in theoretical physics have endowed chairs. Caltech has also been supporting theoretical physics with the prize fellowship program and the distinguished visitors program. These programs have been very successful. For example, we have had over 120 prize postdoctoral fellows in the past three decades, and over 95% of them hold academic positions at major research institutions in the world. They include the directors of Max Planck Institute and the Carberry Institute for Theoretical Physics at Santa Barbara. Thanks to the Sherman Fairchild Foundation and the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, we have been able to increase the size of the endowment for theoretical physics significantly and establish this new institute for theoretical physics. The new endowment will strengthen the prize postdoctoral fellowship program, increase support for graduate fellowship in theoretical physics to bring young talent to Caltech. We'll be able to invite more visitors and we'll have workshops and symposium like this in a timely manner to accelerate the exchange of ideas. We are all worried that federal fund for basic science is dwindling. The Walter Bach Institute for Theoretical Physics has been established as a scientific oasis to enable theorists to pursue their dreams with intellectual freedom. It is a great pleasure to name this institute in honor of our longtime friend, Walter Burke, who is a life trustee of Caltech. Walter has contributed to Caltech personally and built a unique partnership between the Sherman Fairchild Foundation and the Division of Physics, Mathematics, and Astronomy at Caltech as a president of the foundation over 35 years. We are also grateful to Dominic Orr for his generous gift to our division, which has made this workshop possible. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the Keck Institute for Space Study and its director, Tom Prince, for letting us use this beautiful conference center. The primary purpose of the Keck Institute is to bring together scientists and engineers for sustained technical interactions aimed at developing new space mission concepts and technology. The Spanish revival style house right next to this conference center is also a part of the Keck Institute. It was originally built as a private residence for Richard Tolman, who demonstrated that electron is a charge carrier in the flow of electricity in metals and determined its mass. Among astrophysicists, he's also known for his research on stellar structure in the relativistic domain. During the World War II, Tolman was the chief science advisor to General Leslie Groves on the development of the atomic bomb. If you walk to the south end of the house, you will see the original study of Tolman with built-in cabinets and bookcases. Clearly, more people are interested in attending this workshop than the number of chairs available in this room, where there are still some vacancies so far. <laughs> we have therefore set up an overflow space with live video feed. For this morning session, it will be at the 115 Beckman Institute, which is a pinkish building south of this conference center. In the afternoon, the overflow space will move to 121 Beckman Institute. These videos will be made available to the public between 
5.30 p.m. today through 8.30 a.m. Saturday morning Pacific Standard Time at ustream.tv backslash Caltech. All the recording will be available on Ustream again after 5.30 p.m. on Saturday. High quality versions will be on Caltech's YouTube channel next week too. I'd like to thank Leslie Maxfield and her team of academic media technology for setting this up with such a short notice. Last but not least, I'd like to thank our administrative assistant, Carol Silverstein, who actually did most of the work in organizing this workshop. This evening, we'll have a reception at the fourth floor of Lauriston and Downs building with wine and food starting at 6 p.m. and all registered participants and invited guests are welcome to attend. We'll all walk from here to the Lauriston Downs building, so just follow the crowd after the last talk of the day. We'll also provide lunch and coffee here for uh, registered participants. And there is also, also a cafe at the Broad Center right next to this building. The announcement by the BICEP2 collaboration on March 17 was one of the most exciting events I have experienced as a theoretical physicist. We are very happy to be able to organize this workshop as an inaugural event of the Walter Burke Institute for Theoretical Physics. And I look forward to stimulating talks and discussions. So with that, I'd like to turn the podium to Tom Sofer, the chair of the Division of Physics, Mathematics, and Astronomy. Well, thank you, Hiroshi. Uh, it is indeed my pleasure to also welcome you to this, uh, to this uh, workshop on behalf of the division and uh, on behalf of Caltech. Uh, it really is a pleasure to, to uh, welcome you to the, the, this workshop uh, that's, that's motivated by the, the uh, results announced by the BICEP team uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, and the purpose of the, the workshop is to uh, explore the implications of these data. Uh, there might even be some discussion motivated by, by rumors of, that are floating around the community. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, this is the first uh, public event uh, to be sponsored by the Walter Burke Institute for Theoretical Physics, and it really is a prime example of the interchange of ideas that will be the hallmark of this new institute. Uh, I'm also very pleased to, to welcome the many distinguished speakers who will be uh, coming, who've come to this workshop, and I really look forward to hearing their talks. Uh, as I said, the goal of the workshop is to explore the implications for our understanding of the early universe and fundamental physics of the amazing results from BICEP. Uh, I don't need to uh, uh, recount to you the history of, of the theory of inflation. I personally find it astounding that uh, uh, that uh, the, the work by Mark Kamienkowski and others uh, predicted there actually would be a, an observable consequence of what happened in the first 10 to the minus 35 seconds of, of the universe. That, uh, and that to me is just astonishing, but I think it, it shows uh, both the incredible uh, cleverness of, of, the, uh, of, of the theoretical uh, uh, physicists, but also then the consequent uh, ability of experimenters to, to go out and test that is, is indeed uh, uh, astounding. Um, it was uh, Jamie Bach and, and uh, Andrew Lang of Caltech who began the quest to detect the signal. Uh, according to Jamie, it all started with tennis. Uh, he reports that uh, back when he was young, uh, he and Brian Keating would uh, play tennis regularly and then talk about science and came up with an idea of, of doing such an experiment. And uh, they, they uh, convinced Andrew Lang uh, to, to, to uh, support, to begin this program. And, and so Andrew and, and Jamie uh, began, began this uh, program that, that uh, became BICEP. Uh, they worked with the, the Micro Devices Laboratory at JPL to invent the detector technology that has been used throughout the program. 
and they ran the, the, uh, uh, this program in phases, and BICEP II uh, is the second phase of the program. Uh, along the way, uh, Andrew and Jamie built an incredible team of young uh, scientists and students uh, that have passed through Caltech. Uh, John Kovac and Chao Lin Kuo uh, were two of the postdocs who were here at Caltech, and uh, they're now at uh, Harvard and, uh, and Stanford. Uh, they, along with Clem Pryke, and, uh, who's at Minnesota, and Jamie are the co-investigators, co-principal investigators for BICEP2. I think the key to this amazing uh, result is both the spectacular theory and, and the, the wonderful experiments that were devised to, te to, to test the theory. Uh, the experimental work has uh, enabled just tremendous progress uh, in the advancement of science and provided the foundation for the theoretical discussions that this workshop uh, and others throughout the world are, uh, are having now. Uh, the amazing technology that, uh, that Jamie and his colleagues have invented uh, is, is, true, is at the core of nearly all of the current CMB experiments. And it's a tribute to the ingenuity, skill, and commitment of the BICEP group that they've made this uh, enormous progress enabling uh, the results that we've heard about. You know, um, great results require taking great risks. Uh, and Andrew Lang used to describe this enterprise that, that they've embarked upon as a wild goose chase. Uh, it, it is, uh, in fact, uh, the case that chasing wild geese requires real resources. And uh, what I can say with, uh, with great pride, uh, since, since uh, this happened before, before my time uh, on the dark side of administration here, is that, uh, is that Caltech and, and JPL made uh, crucial, substantial investments to seed and execute much of the work that we've heard about and that you will be discussing today and tomorrow. Making those investments enabled by the BICEP team to get to the stage where they could convince the federal uh, funding agencies to further support the projects. The work to build the incredible detectors that Jamie and his team at JPL created were predominantly supported by the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. The, the WM Keck Foundation funded the building of the Keck Array Telescope. That is the third stage of their, of their enterprise. Central to getting the project started was seed funding from the estate of John Robinson and from JPL. In addition, of course, the National Science Foundation provided uh, funding for the pro project, and they, of course, run the South Pole uh, Station in Antarctica. Uh, what we'll hear today and tomorrow is this tremendously exciting combination of experiment and theory. This is as it should be. Theory motivates the experiments, and experiments test the theory. I'm looking forward to hearing from all of our distinguished speakers, and I'm sure you are too. And with that, I'll uh, set a good example for, for speakers by setting down uh, early. Thank you.